Boy, I feel like I've been to church. I feel like I'm in church. Isn't that good? Isn't it good to come to church and feel like you're actually there? God is having his way and pouring out his spirit. Doing some awesome stuff. Have a place marked, but since I'm having a look or something, I just want to read this. Just because it's in my spirit. The Lord says, but it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. How many believe that? How many believe we live in the last days? It says, shall come to pass. Let me, let me go ahead and say, let me go ahead and tell you something. This is, this is the book of Acts. This is Acts 2, and I'm in verse 17. This hasn't been fulfilled yet. Ain't that good? Okay. That means it's still going to happen. Could be happening right now. The Bible says, will you not know it? You know what the Word of God says? But he says, let me just read it. See, see what the Lord wants to do with it. But I'm just going to be obedient. It shall come to pass in the last days. Well, I believe we're living in the last days. Jesus in Matthew 24 talk, talked about earthquakes, wars, pestilence, um, revival. You know, just talk about negative things, you talk about positive things. God pulled out of the Spirit. I mean, it's the last days. I don't think we need to hold a class to realize we're in the last days. Amen? Not in church. I mean, if I was walking through the mall, I might have to. But I think we ought to realize that God's about to wrap this thing up. Trump of God's getting ready to sound. Dead of Christ, get ready to rise. And those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Then Paul says, wait a minute. Then Paul says, therefore comfort each other with those words. I mean, how many words? Is that comforting words to you this morning? Therefore comfort each other with these words. Anyway, that's, that's yet to be fulfilled. Are we in the tribulation? Well, first of all, if you have to ask, then no. Whoever's left behind and, and going to be in tribulation, you won't, you won't have to ask. You'll say, oh, this is it. This is it. Anyway, I'm trying to read this. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Not just certain people. That's how I interpret that. I said not certain people. I don't like going to church with certain people. I like going to church with all flesh. <laughs> if, if, you're looking, if you're looking to church for certain people, highest praise is not for you. Let me go ahead and help you. Go ahead and get, go get in line and go ahead. You, you, and I'll take your seat when you're done when I get there later. I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will, shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Amen. Old men shall dream dreams. And all my men servants and all my maid servants, I will pour my spirit out in those days. And they shall prophesy. They shall speak what's prophesied. They shall speak the word and it will come to pass. Amen. Well, last week, this time I was at Asbury through the, to the outpouring there in, in, in Kentucky. Yes, I was. I know you're envious, but hey, somebody had to go. And I'm the pastor, so I guess I got to check it out. I won't there to check it out. I, did, I had no intention to check anything out. I went just to be a part. And God got me, uh, got me there, and so we just just received it. And so we saw, we saw uh, the evidence of the Spirit of God being poured out on all flesh. Sons and daughters prophesying. Young men seeing vision. Old men dreaming dreams. So God's doing it. Amen. Want a whole lot, or if, if any, be honest with you, want a whole lot. If anything, I saw happening there that don't happen here. Amen. Thank you for the underwhelming applause for eight of you, but I appreciate that. <laughs> and I will show wonders in heaven above. Now let me let me stop right here. I got to get off of this. This ain't what I came up here to. I just. 
messed up my, my place, so I had to find it, and I just stumbled across this. He says, I'll pour my spirit out. I told you this is unfulfilled prophecy going to take place. And then he says, I was, then, then he goes into, first, if you're, if you're studying the Bible, verse 18 talks, talks, about a, talks about a dimension. And now in 19, he says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs of the earth beneath uh, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. I mean, that hadn't happened yet either. <laughs> but it's going to happen. But before that happens, that's, that's talks about tribulation there, like the world's ever seen before. Before that happens, God's going to pour his spirit out of own flesh, not just certain people. Amen. I mean, God, the Bible is just, just plain. He said, the sun should be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great coming awesome day of the Lord. The coming great awesome day of the Lord is his second coming. Then the eastern sky is going to open up. And the army dressed in white is going to be with him. Who's that? That's us. Well, how do we get up there? Well, it's called the rapture. We got up there seven years before we came back. Anyway, I got time to tease that. If you don't, if you, if you don't believe me, you're in your own church. <laughs> and it shall come to pass, saith the Lord, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. How many know that's still being fulfilled today? Whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not certain people whosoever. How many whosoever's we have in here? Ain't talking about perfect people, people who went to church your whole life, and people's got it all together. Whosoever call upon the name. Come on, if you're whosoever this morning, let the Lord know you're in the building this morning. Hey, let him know you're called upon his name. I said, let him know you're called upon. If you call upon my name, he said, if you call on me, I'll answer you. And what he says, he said, if you call on me, I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things you don't know of. How many is ready for great and mighty things? <laughs> great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. <clears throat> well, I tried to, I, want, I, I, was, I, was, I was heading to Romans 10, but we took a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good, good handy mark so I kind of stopped there on my way don't you just love a good handy mark you go in there and I got like like a plethora of uh, fountain drinks I mean you know and not y'all okay I should I just kids can tell me I just love a good I mean a bad one you don't want a bad one uh, you don't appreciate a good one until you've seen a bad one you've been to a bad one it's like a church you don't appreciate a good one until you've been to a bad one Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You know what you just heard? You just heard the word of God. You know what you just celebrated? The word of God. And faith comes through hearing that word. Amen. How do you, how do you get faith? You get faith by hearing. I just felt the whole atmosphere in this room again. We just sung and we just worship and we just praise and we just gave an announcement. But and thank God for the worship and thank God for the praise and thanks God for the announcement and everything and, and, and the daily business of, of the business of, of doing church and everything we need to do. But I'm telling you, nothing lifted the faith in this house like the word of God falling upon your ears and to your heart and you begin to get it. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's getting ready to do some stuff. Why is that? Because faith comes by hearing. Amen. What do we hear? We just heard the word. We just heard the word. So I just want to, I want to talk to you a few minutes about the word. Thank you, brother. I, I want to, I, I, I want to talk to you a few minutes about the word. We got into it a while ago. I want to, I, I want to dip into it a little bit more because, because the word comes by, by the word, or faith comes by the word, by hearing something. Now let me go ahead and deal with something about hearing something. If faith comes by hearing, unbelief can come by hearing as well. Be careful what you hear. Amen. You got to be careful what you're hearing. You got to be careful what you're seeing. You got to be careful what you're saying. 
because unbelief can come in there just as, just as, just as easy as, as faith comes in. Just like this whole room again to fill with faith. How many has there been a room full of critical people? <laughs> just doubting people. Just people don't have a word. Well, we got to live amongst them. And, and we go to work amongst them. We go to school amongst them. And sometimes we go to church amongst them. And so we have to realize, you know, how, how to separate and hear what God says. Now, God speaks to you talks in so many different ways. Let me deal with some stuff here so we can get back to what, what this says. I mean, God can speak to you like I just spoke to you. We just open up his word, and that's his word. This is his word right here. You want to know what God is saying? Here's his word. Here's his word. But, a lot of but sometimes God will speak to you just through your tender consciousness. He just drop a word into your spirit, and you know it's the word. i uh, give you a good, you, first of all, peace comes upon you. And you don't forget it. That's, how, that's the evidence you know it's God. Well, I can't remember what it was. Well, then, I hate to hurt you, but that's, that wasn't the word. When God speaks to you, you don't forget it. It's like, a, it's like a tattoo into your heart. It's just in there. He'll do that. He'll speak to you like I'm doing right now. He'll use, he'll use a man or woman of God to speak over you, speak over your life, and you'll receive a word from that. That's the word of living God. And faith comes by hearing that word. Amen. Faith comes by hearing that word. And you, and, and, and you hear that word and you believe that word and that's the only way you, and that's, that's the way you receive faith and according to the Bible, that's the only way you hear that faith is by the word. Now Hebrews 11 and 1. Let's go a little bit deeper. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is a substance. What is a substance? A substance is a reality. So faith is reality. Now let's, back, let's, let's stay right there because I want to teach you something this morning, so we're going to take our time. Now, now faith is a substance. Faith is a reality. I done told you that faith comes by hearing the Word. So faith is the Word because faith isn't a nothing. Faith is a something. Abraham and Sarah, who's the father of our faith, they didn't step out on nothing, even though it looked like they did when they left Ur, their, their family and their friends and their jobs and their business. They stepped out on the word. God says, to, God told Abraham, Abraham, take your wife Sarah and take your nephew Lot and take what servant she got, take what you got. I'm going to make, I'm going to take you to a, to a, to a land flow of milk and honey. I'm going to take you and I'm going to make you a great nation. He don't even have any children. His wife is barren. He's barren. They, they can't even have a children. But guess what? He got a word. So he said, well, he stepped out on nothing. No, he, he, to, in, in the natural, it looks like nothing. But in the supernatural, it looks like everything because he stepped out on a word. You got to watch God's word because on the outside it looks like nothing, but on the inside it's everything. Why? Because it's a word. Come on now. It's a word. Now, faith, so what is it? So now we get a definition of faith. I done told you. Or faith, faith comes by the word. So we can, say, we can, we can insert word there. Now, the word of God is a substance, is a reality. How many know that when God's words becomes a reality to you, then it just ignites that faith? What is faith? Faith is trust in God. I have faith because I can trust Him. I trust, I trust Him and I trust what He says. I trust His Word. <clears throat> now, faith is the substance, is the reality. I'm like, I just, I just paraphrasing here. You can put it in your notes. Faith is the substance, it's the reality of things hoped for. It's the Evidence. That word evidence there means confidence in things not seen. We haven't seen it, but it's a reality. We haven't experienced it, but we're confident in it. Want to know why? Because it's evidence. What is evidence? Faith. What is faith? God's word. So we got We've got substance, we've got reality, we've got evidence, we've got confidence in God's Word. Whenever God's Word becomes a reality to you, whenever God's Word becomes confidence to you, 
then you can please God. Yes. Hebrews 11 and 6, we're rolling pretty good now. Hebrews 11 and 6, because without faith, without the word, without the evidence, it's a little bit hard to please God. No, read, your, read your sign up there. It's impossible. You know what impossible means in the Greek? I don't either, but I assume it means impossible. <laughs> didn't look it up, but I can guarantee you that it means impossible. It means it can't happen. It cannot happen without faith, without the Word, without evidence, without confidence. Oh, I thought I could just come to God any way I want to. Oh, you can come boldly into the throne room of grace. He's giving you grace to do it. But if you want to please him, and when you please him, he rewards you, then you got to come to him with confidence. I ain't talking about coming to him and just lay down on his feet. I'm talking about coming to him because you need something. Oh, come on, church. Don't act like you don't ever need something. Most of us here today because we need something. We come to him with a word. We come in him with confidence. We come in him with evidence. You cannot have evidence unless you've seen something and you've heard something. If you have evidence because you've seen someone broke the law, you have, you have evidence because you've seen something or you've heard something. Detective comes in at you and say, has anybody heard anything? Anybody seen anything? Yeah, I saw something. And what you saw and what you heard becomes evidence. And you got confidence in what you said. No, I saw him do it. Are you willing to confess what you saw? Yes, sir. Now your evidence becomes his evidence. What you saw and what you heard Becomes everybody's evidence. Oh, hallelujah. What's God trying to do this morning? He's trying to get this word from, from off your coffee table and off the side table of your, of, your, of, your, of your bed. Just being something, being an app on your phone. To being, to being, being something you got a reality in and something you got confidence in so that whenever you need something from God, you come boldly to the throne room of grace and you say, God, I got confidence in your word and that confidence and I confessing that, that evidence that I have because I've seen something and I've heard something. If I'm not around a preacher, I got to see it. If I can't find a Bible, can't find a preacher, can't find my, my sister who's always lifts me up, then God places something into me, then I, then I can hear. You cannot, you, you cannot give evidence of something unless you've seen it or you heard it. You want to know what God is doing on earth today? He's speaking to his people. And people are turning this with his word into confidence. They sit in here at confidence in the evidence and they start speaking the evidence that they receive from God's word. And it's becoming a reality. Well, Pat, if you want to hear Wednesday night, give you a quick update. What did you see in Asbury? What did you see in the great that, that, that outpouring of, uh, uh, at that college campus and people from all over? I was, I was in line and waited, waited almost three hours in line. Cold. 30 degrees. Snowing. Did I mention to you it was cold? Cold. I had on blue jeans. I did carry a sweater, and I had a rain jacket in the car. I don't know if I mentioned to you the fact that it was cold or not, but it was cold, and it was colder than what I had. But anyway, my point is, is that people from all over, the, the, just in our line, in our two and a half to three hour line, we waited just to get into the, into the, to the chapel. And there, were, there was other things going on up there, but, but that's where we wanted to go, and we were waiting. But, but my point is, anywhere from, from Chicago to, to Florida and everywhere in between was in there, was just, you know, how you kind of, after two and a half, three hours hanging out with, in, in a line, you just start, you start, you start making friends. <laughs> if nothing else, get close to them. <laughs> I'm, your I'm your friend. 
know what I'm saying? And one thing I found out more I'm thinking about it is that, man, we're all there because we've seen something or we've heard something. And we're all there because we got confidence. They want a skeptic in the bunch. They want no Debbie Downers in the, in the, in, in the bunch or Dr. Dumbbells in the bunch trying to, trying to, trying to you know, just negate what was going on. If they were, we didn't pay them any mind because, remember, faith comes by hearing. Anyway, so my only point is, is that you can have anything you want to at any time. All you got to do is have, is have confidence in what God can do. So what I come back to teach my church is this, is that faith does come by hearing, hearing the word of God. And, with, and, and, and that now faith is the substance, it's the reality of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We've got, we've got evidence. That, that evidence there is, is, is confidence. And, and that evidence and that confidence come with confession. I want you to understand that the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So God the Father is the Word. And Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. That don't mean they were the same people. They, they, it means that everything that the, that, that the Father said, Jesus said. So he becomes the Word because he says everything the Father says. And so Jesus is the Word. And then the Bible says that the Word was manifested in the flesh. So we can understand today that if we have faith in what Jesus says, if we have faith in what the Word says, if we have confidence in what the Word says, then we can speak it. And whenever we speak it, the fact that the Father says it, that, 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 that's the evidence. Yes. The evidence is the Word. Now watch me. The evidence is the Word because God spoke it. And then we hear the word and we speak the word. What word? God, you said you would save me and my household. God, you said you would heal my, my sickness. God, you said you would cure all my diseases. God, you said by your stripes we are healed. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The punch for our peace was placed upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. What are we doing? We are, we are taking his evidence, which is his word, and we are confessing it with our evidence, which is his word. And when we start speaking the evidence that we have from his evidence, then that's two or more speaking the same thing. And when two or more speaks the same thing, God says it's going to be established. So you can't just see it and you can't just hear it. you got to speak it. Matthew 18 and 19, I think. Or 19 18, I can't remember. Somebody look it up. You, gotta, you understand what I just said? you got to speak it. You say, well, I got to get, I got to get, I got to get gay nail on them to, 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 to agree with me. Honey, whenever you speak the word, you're taking the evidence that that is the word. You got, the fact that you're speaking it, you're saying, I am confident in what God said. God is confident in what he said to the point that he has, it is evident, it is confident. And when we speak it, there's your two right there. And whenever two or more, and then some else here, the more the merrier. But you don't need nobody else. You can be in a situation, ain't nobody but you and God. And God says, I'm going to change that situation. I'm going to establish that situation. You you can't get nobody else to believe God with you but God. Amen. And you start confessing it. And you start confessing it. Now, now we can go back to Hebrews 11 and 6 where it says that, that if we, that without faith it's impossible to please him or without the word, without the word, without evidence. <laughs> You know the reason why there was several thousand people waiting outside in the cold snow and there were several thousand already in there waiting in the middle of Kentucky three, for about three weeks is because they had confidence in the evidence in which they saw and which they heard. But the good news is you don't have to get in the car and drive 10 or 11 hours to Kentucky to get it. You can get it right here and on the corner of 17 and Redbug in Shalate, North Carolina. That's what you so deserve to do. 
You can have it in your own house. You can have it in your own living room. You can have it in your car. Whenever you come with a word, whenever you come with a word, whenever you come with evidence and you start confessing what you've seen and you heard, it's impossible not to please him. For if you come to God and believe that he is, then he is a rewarder to those of us that diligently seek after him. Amen. What I got to come with? I got to take a 12-week course. I got to be safe. No, all you got to come with faith. How did faith come with what? With the word. I got a word. What is God's word? God's word is his assurance. God's word is his validation. God's word is, is the confidence that we have. And when we start praying, not at the level of our intellect. <clears throat> See, a lot of times we start praying, you know, we start out with this. God, I know what the Word says, but, but I don't know if the Word can really do it or not. I mean, I know it says it's going to heal me, but can it really heal me? No, that's not confidence. That's not confidence. God, I know what your Word says. God, you said that I am healed. God, you said that we are, we are the saved of the Lord. You said you will save me and my household, God. God, you said from the rising of the sun to the going down to the same, your name shall be praised. So I praise you today for all things because in you and by you do all things consist. What is that? That is confidence. And so when you come to God with confidence, if you come to God with word, if you come to God with faith, without it, it's impossible. So with it, all things are possible. Amen. And so we begin to confess it. We begin to confess. The word confess, even in the Webster definition, means to bring evidence of, to bring the evidence of it. Where's the evidence that God can do what he says he's going to do? It's right here in his book. <laughs> quit, trying to, quit, trying to, quit trying to defend God and prove everything about God to people. You don't have to. The only evidence you need is what's in this book. And then you start confessing it. You start confessing what it is that God says that you have and what, and what God says you can do. And, and whenever you confess what God says you have and what God says you can do, then, then everything that wasn't reality, it becomes a reality. It's not always the amount of faith we have. It's what we are confessing. You can have all the evidence of what you've seen and heard, but if you ain't willing to confess it, it doesn't matter what you've seen or heard. Hmm? Oh, I saw the whole thing. Okay, you willing to tell us about it? Nope. Man, ain't doing us no good. But honey, sometimes God will gotta show you something either in his word or sit in a church service like this or just you just praying while you mow your grass and you just start confessing that thing. You start speaking that thing. When you start speaking that thing, you start confessing, it pleases God, and he starts rewarding you. He'll start doing what it is you're confessing. Because without it, without a word, without evidence, and God says, I give you all the evidence you need. My word is my evidence. Hmm? God says, my word is my evidence. How do you know God's going to do it? Because he said he would. We got confidence in it. So then we start confessing it. We start speaking it. I'm, I'm not into name it and claim it and grab it and blah, blah. I, I, I went through the 80s. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, entire movements became, you know, the, the, the matter of fact, go to, go, to Romans, go to Romans 10 and 8. Go to Romans 10 and 8 up here. We're, we're close by Romans 10 and 8. I mean, first of all, we say, and well, let's go ahead and read that. It says the word, what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth. And it's in your heart. What? The confidence. The word is faith. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word. Faith is the substance, the reality of what you need. The evidence, the, the confidence that you have is near you. How near is it? It is in your mouth and in your heart. All you got to do is speak it. This is the word of faith which we preach. What am I preaching this morning? What is in my heart, what is on my tongue, which is the confidence that I have that if I speak it, if I take it to God and say, God, I come to you because I believe I got confidence in your word, then it's going to do what you said it's going to do. 
Amen? Verse 9. Now, we really know verse 9, even to the point that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How did you get saved this morning? How, how are you saved right now? Because you confess in your mouth and what you believe in your heart, and God forgave you of all your sins because God says, I'm a deliverer and I'm a savior. Hmm? You have confidence in it. How confidence, how confidence in that word are you this morning? Confidence to believe that if you drop dead right now with a thug, that you open your eyes, you'd be in a place called heaven? I am. I am. No matter what the devil tries to dangle at you, you're not going to fall backwards. You won't know why. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in you were in the world. Are you that confident what God has delivered you from? There's not enough angels. There's not enough powers. There's not against enough principalities to come against you because you're confident with your confessing because your confession is what you have experienced and your experience is your evidence this morning. What evidence do I have that I'm born again? I'm on my way to heaven. I haven't been there. I didn't see myself get born again, but I got evidence. I saw something and I heard something. What did you see, preacher? What did you hear? I saw the word or I heard the word and I believed it for what it says and I agree with it. I became a witness. I'm a witness witness I don't need you to agree with me about my salvation I don't even need you to even like me I'm a witness come on you're a witness I got a word from God amen a witness you're a witness because you've seen something you've heard something you've got evidence of something I see around this body of believers just want a bunch of witnesses. What have we witnessed? What God said He can do. And it changes our circumstance. What's well, a circumstance that comes from the word circle that you cannot get out of? That's what a rut is, anyway. You know what a rut is? It's a grave that just don't have any ends. It's in a rut, in a grave. It's a circumstance. You start confessing. I'm going to lift you out of that circumstance. The pressure that comes from circumstance is what we call affliction. You're being afflicted because you're in a rut. You're in a circle. You just, the devil lets you get out just enough. Your flesh lets you out just enough, make you think you're okay. And right back in that rut you go. It's called affliction. Your mama dealt with it. Your daddy dealt with it. Your uncle dealt with it. You got cousins dealing with it. But guess what? You got a word. And that word became a reality. It became substance. And that word became evidence. It became confidence in it. And you begin to speak that confidence, which is a witness to it. That I don't have to stay in this rut. I don't have to stay in this circumstance. I don't have to stay afflicted. I can be set free. That's why Hebrews said a little bit later, if there's any sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church that their prayer of faith will heal the sick. But, comma, if there's any afflicted, let him pray. Why does the afflicted have to pray, but the sick, those with infirmity, can call upon the elder church to pray? Because an infirmity is different than an affliction. You got time to teach that, but the, that's what the Bible says. If you're sick, the Bible says one of the many ways you can be healed is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You say you can't pray for yourself, but, it's you, but if you're afflicted, if you're in a rut, if you're going through pressures because of the circumstances you're going through, the Bible says you need to call upon the name of the Lord, and He will hear you, and He will answer you, and show you great mighty things you do not know not of. If you have confidence in what it is. Now, if you come to your own intellect, well, God, I don't know. I'm in this rut. I've been in this rut for 13 years now. God, I just don't know if you're working, doing it or not. God, but if you can do anything like that preacher said you might can do, God, I wish you would do that. That's not faith. That's a whiny Christian. 
and the Bible says it's impossible to please God. God says, man, I sent your word. I sent, I sent, I gave you, I gave you evidence of what I can do. I gave you confidence of what you can do. All you got to do is confess what you've seen and heard. Be a witness to it. Woman with issue. That's a circumstance. See, we like to read the Bible and say, she got up one morning and she said, Oh, Jesus coming down the road. If I might but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she puts her slippers on and she run outside and she touched the hem of his garment and oh, she was made whole. That's how we love to read the Bible. And when it don't happen to us that way, we quit reading the Bible. We quit coming to church. But can I tell you that as she was spending all the money she had, she said, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment. When she went from one doctor to another to another, to another doctor, to another, she said, oh, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Every time she didn't get any better, but she kept on getting worse. She kept on saying, if I just took up the hem of the garment. Why? Because she's seen something or she's heard something and she's got confidence in it. And if she ever gets the opportunity to touch the hem of his garment, bless God, she's going to reach out and touch the hem of the garment. It wasn't the first time she said, if I'm not touching him of the garment. She said it many times. She believed it. She had confidence in it. She was a witness of it. It hasn't come to pass yet, but she believed it's going to be reality. She's the only one. Not the daughters, not her friends, not her money, because she's had a, all she had was a word, and she had confidence in the word, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. So when she got close enough to touch the hem of his garment, she touched him, and he said, whoa, I see your word. Which is your faith. The prodigal. I think he just woke up one day and says, I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm going, going to daddy's house. No. I think he kept on saying, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of living like this. Jump back into some more junk. I'm tired of this. Sort of hang out with some more wrong people. I'm tired of this. If I can just go back to daddy's house and he jumps into the hog pen. He's just lost everything he had. I'm tired of this. You know how many times, how many times did it take us to say, I'm tired of this, until we finally became witnesses of the word of God, which is upon our life. We go, how about blind barns? He says, oh, if I just call upon, if I can say, oh, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I believe he can't say it. If I can ever get to a position that I can call upon his name, I'm going to see. I believe he said it over and over. He didn't say it like a man for the very first time when he let it come out of his belly. It wasn't somebody else the first time. He's been saying it every day. He's been saying it in his sleep. He's been saying it to other people. He's I'm telling you, it's coming today. If I call upon the name of the Lord, he's going to heal me. I'm here to tell you, when you got a word and you got confidence in the word, one day you're going to say it and everything's going to come to pass. So you can either quit it and stay the way you are or keep confessing what you got confidence in. And the only thing I got confidence in is His Word. I'm a witness. All the friends was with you. When you first, I got a word, I got a word. God's going, He's going to put a marriage together. Yeah, we got you, girl. Six months later, you're the only person that's come to witness to that word. It's a substance. It's a reality. Faith is evidence. It is the confidence that you have. And you are a witness to the evidence. If you got evidence, you're a witness. And if you're a witness, you can confess it. If no one else can see it, if no one else can hear it, they can't confess it. If you can still see it and you can still hear it, then you can still confess it. That's why some churches are going to experience revival and some not. That's why some preachers are going to quit and some preachers are like, I can't quit. That's why some Christians are going to throw in the towel. Some say, oh, no, 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 no. I've seen some things. I've heard some things. It's not over yet. Amen. By the way, stand to your feet. I just feel like praising right now. Take your hands up right now. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, God, make us witnesses today. Oh, God, make us witnesses today, Lord. God, may we be a bunch of confident people, Lord. The devil is a liar, Lord. God, we believe today with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, God, that you are spoken to us today. That, God, you are speaking to your people, Lord. That, God, we are witnesses to what you're saying. That, God, you're not done yet. 
that Lord, the best is yet to come. Oh, hallelujah. You said you're saving me and my household, Lord. I believe you're going to do it. We call sons and daughters home. We call husbands and wives home. We call mamas and daddies home. Come on. We call cancer patients healed. We call drug addicts delivered and set free today. Oh, come on, church. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Yeah, it's in the Word. I said it's in the Word. It's in the Word. It's in the Word. God, we call the mighty outpouring of your spirit to fall upon our flesh. God, we heard it in your Word this morning. We believe it in your Word today. We are witnesses to it today. Oh, we witnesses to it today, Lord. Shout out, Baba. Come open your mouth. He's baptizing the Holy Spirit right now. Open your mouth. Pastor, so I'm going to share it with you as well. <clears throat> so here's it's simple Genesis 1 1 and 3. I really pray, so I got to do something simple. Here's as here's simple as you can get Genesis 1 1 and 3. Then God says, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1 and 3. I mean, it's it. I mean, this is how close the beginning is. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. And the earth without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God hovered across the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. There was light. Right. Before then, there was, there was darkness. But here's the thing. The sun wasn't created till day four. The source of the light or the word didn't hit the source until day four. But light appeared as soon as he said it. What's your point? When you receive a word from God, you continue to live and confess under the light that God has given you until it shows up to the source. Some of you are going to walk in the darkness until day four until it shows up in the source. Or you can walk in the light and confess the light that God said was coming until it showed up. Day one, I stayed in the light. Day two, I stayed in the light. Day three, I stayed in the light. I don't know how long it's going to take you to get to day four, but what I do know, you're going to confess, you're going to work, you're going to pray, you're going to worship under the light that God says let it be. And God's word is a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. You can walk under the promise of the light of the word until it shows up to its source. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to be. 
going to show up. when it shows up. Oh, that's a word for somebody. I said, you ain't gonna remember when it showed up. I just had a, just had a, just had a, just an open vision of, of like, if we were just walking around under the light that God, that God said, let there be. Then he's signing up, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to plug the sun in, which is the source of it. Then he goes and plugs it in. You've been so habitually Operating under the word that God told you that you ain't know when the, what, when the source of it even showed up. Because you didn't need him to show up to praise him and worship him and honor him and for him to be the evidence and for him for you to have confidence in him. The fact that he would even say such a thing under your situation proves that you that you can confess whatever he says. The fact that you've been Think that we are gathering together in the corner of 17 and Red Bug is all I need, God. I don't need you to do anything else, God. Just, just give me a promise, give me a word, give me a confidence that you're gonna do something great in my team. Amen. It's just, it just remind me. I, I, I remember, I remember years ago. I'm talking about way before I knew anything about this place because I remember I was living in Goldsboro and I was, I was on this, just this faith thing and God was trying to teach me. I thought it was just to help me then. It, it, it was to help me through what I was getting ready to do. But then I, kept, I, I heard a preacher one time talking about faith. You know, I come from, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I won't ever told this stuff. I was born in church, I won't ever told this stuff. Anyway, you got time to go there. But I do remember this, and this guy captivated me. He said he had a lump. He had a lump on his, it was Frederick K. Price. Wait a minute, Frederick K. Price, he's with Jesus now, but. And it, he was on TV one night, and I was, and God said, watch this man. And I watched him. But here's what he said. Great, great preacher of faith. He says he had a, he had a knot on the side. And, and he prayed and asked God every day. He said, that thing needs to go. He didn't even think about it, but every night when he got in the shower and began to wash, he said, what do you think he felt? That knot. And his faith took a hit. But every day, every time he felt that knot, he'd wash it, he thought, he thanked God. God, whatever it is, if it's a cyst, if it's cancer, whatever it is, God, I thank you that it's gone. And he heard it, he, he received the word from God. He says, I'll take care of it. My point is, I'm angry, so he didn't say this. To me, when I got this word here, it reminded me of that, that he won't under the light that God's gonna do it until it came to pass. All I, only other thing I remember about this, never forget it, he said he kept on washing, he kept on praying, he kept on washing, he kept on praying, he kept on washing, he kept on praying, he kept on washing, he kept on praying for weeks until finally he realized that the knot was gone. He didn't have a clue what day it went. Oh, come on. He got so caught up in what God said. He got caught up, so caught up in the evidence. He got caught up in the, in the confidence that he just, every time he got in the shower, he just thanked God and the dog was gone. He, he was so consumed in what God was going to do and thanking him. He said, I don't know if it left on the third day. I don't know if it left. It was like a month into it. It might have left last night. I don't know when it left. I'm here to tell somebody that if you walk on the light and the promise of the light, you're going to get so caught up in the confidence you have in God. Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad to connect with you. If you are new to HP and want to get more involved, I invite you to text 910-501-2005. Or you can download our church app and stay up to date on everything going on around here. I also want to tell you three ways you can give today. You can give through text. Text any amount to 84321. If you've never set that up, it only takes a moment. You can give right through your phone at any time. Second, you can give online through our website. Go to highestpraisechurch.com and click the giving tab. You can give right there online. Finally, you can give through mail. You can send in your gift to P.O. Box 1189, Shalote, North Carolina, 28459. And if you're looking for a way to plug in, to serve, or be a part of what is going on here at Highest Praise, join us for our next step class. It's the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. We are so glad you joined us today. God is not done with your life. 
If you need prayer, have any questions, you can reach us through social media or you can call our office at 910-754-4809. We love you, Highest Praise, and the best is now.